Welcome back to the second part of the first video section, which is all about the physical education and wellness curricular overview. In this video, this part two, I'm going to keep this as tight as I can. I value your time and what you're doing, and I'll try to get through as many of these key resources that I feel uh, teachers can benefit from. So in this one, we're going to be looking at the resources available and a quick review of them as well. My name is Paul Marlette, and this series is in conjunction with the ARPDC. Let's get rolling. So in this, I'm going to take a look at some of the key videos and uh, documents that I've been using uh, that I went to to build my last uh, video, which was all from Learn Alberta. There's some great resources there. For the financial piece, I just want to mention this because uh, I'm not going to be leading that work. It's part of the health and physical education, health and wellness uh, portfolio, but the ARPDC has already done a fantastic job of finding other people to build that resource for you, and it's quite robust. So I would encourage you to take a look at those resources on their website. We're also going to take a look at HPEC, which is the Health and Physical Education Council, uh, PHE Canada, which is our national organization to support physical education and health. I've been using many of the CBE, the local board resources. Uh, I don't have access to all of your boards, so I don't even know what they've developed, but uh, I have a feeling there's probably some very uh, robust stuff there as well. And uh, I'm also going to take a little more of a deep dive into a resource that I've been working and building to support your transition into the new curriculum. Wrong button. So the the slide deck that I'm going to post with this is exactly what you see here. So when you're going through this, I'm going to go through a few of these. I'm not going to click on all of them because that would just be a waste of all of our time. So I'm going to go through a few of the key ones, though, because when I watched them, it started to really solidify what it was that this curriculum is attempting to achieve. So the first one, this is the overall structure of the curriculum uh, for... Alberta Learning at this time. It's 20 minutes long, but this one, I, I really enjoyed this. I pulled a lot of my information from it on my first session on the curricular overview. The next one, the what's new uh, in the curriculum documents. So again, this is from Learn Alberta. Uh, they've done a nice job of summarizing in here. This is a really interesting one here. So they talk about where it came from in the 2002 and where it is now. So these little pieces are fantastic. These snapshots, you can actually print them out one per page. A great thing to send home to families or to post them in your gym because it starts to give us some of that key vocabulary. So when we're talking to kids, it just kind of helps us reframe those and keeps them fresh in our mind. Uh, if you're a phys ed specialist, this is a great thing to just have up in the gym for some of our like. Uh, thematic teachers who might be just coming in for half an hour a couple of times a week. Okay, and it goes all the way through grade six. Next one down is the subject overview. Again, just a neat little document and it took me a little while to find it, but when I did, it has a great summary of these eight kind of guiding questions that we talked about in the last video. Some of the organization, we get some of the social emotional concepts, Right, so what do we have? What's new? Again, just to get that vocabulary back out into the world, into our, our buildings where we're doing this. Right, so examining decisions and food selection. That's a great summary of all of the cusps for that one piece. So I know when I talk to specialist, not specialists, uh, like grade level specialists, our elementary team, sometimes this is a great starting point because the cusps fit into these kind of overarching ideas. So that's the subject overview. <laughs> I will figure out not to use that. Uh, the changes in comparison, again, is just a great document. This one here, the competencies and the progressions for cross-curricular. This is a neat document because it actually starts to go back to those competencies. These are the overarching competencies of critical thinking, problem solving, research and management, like the ones that we are now to kind of embed throughout all of our subjects. So when we start to sit down and plan, this is a great document to just give us ideas. 
Uh, at times I find there's a lot more information in these than we need, but just to start getting that framework on where we're heading for. All right, next one, the guiding framework. This is the Curriculum 101. Uh, it does have the link to the full guiding framework, and it's a big document. But there are some neat pieces in here that I pulled from when I started to kind of conceptualize where the curriculum was coming from. So, for example, in page, on page 7.14, this is where it starts to set up the cusps, the overall general specific guiding questions, right, those learning outcomes. So there's some really specific details if you didn't get enough in the last video. And on page 11, there's also the uh, phys ed goals and what they're trying to achieve. A few other resources that are going to come into play. So these are less about the overall curriculum, but are going to really help us when we get into some of the specific sessions. For example, on how to throw and catch, right? Uh, when we look at spatial movement, like how do you actually assess and how do you scaffold this concept of running to space and not running into things or other people? Well, there's some great documents and some resources out there. And I wanted to put these in this video just because we're already into the year, we've already started. So if you're looking for some ideas, these links will start to, hopefully for the generalist, kind of broaden your perspective and allow you to start to look at phys ed the same way you'd look at a math skill or the same way you'd look at teaching reading because there are so many similarities to that. But what I find often for the generalist is that if we don't have the lens or the, the structure that says, okay, if we're throwing, before we start to teach throwing, let's see if the kids can roll a ball on the ground. If they can do that, great. Then we're going to maybe do it with a bounce underhand. We start underhand throwing and then we progress. So the first one here is on the Indigenous and First Nations. Uh, this is the this incredible, incredible resource called Walking Together. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I would encourage every teacher to go to it. It is a wonderful resource. Uh, the Phys Ed Canada Movement Skills document. This was a game changer for me when I was a younger teacher. So this breaks down specific skills into movement cues. So for example, dodge is a rapid shift and characteristics of the dodge. So it gives us what to look for. It gives us the vocabulary. It gives us the framework to help students Get better at it. Even these over here, the keywords. So look where you're running. <laughs> Number one, if you're in a gym with a specialist, we generally don't let kids run in the gym until we know that they can do it without hitting other people. Get low, push off, one step, go left, go right. So it gives us all these cues. And this is a big document. So this takes us all the way up to kicking. And it gives us a, a how to get ready. How do you initiate? What do you do at the end? And then keywords. So again, this is something I'll be referring back to in other series, but again, I wanted to have it here. The Special Olympics Australia, this is a cool fundamental movement. Whoa, sorry. Uh, this is a cool fundamental movement document, uh, immature and mature patterns. This is another thing that I've found that gives us a pretty, a pretty cool idea of what mature running and immature running looks like. And this is like a series of cue cards, right? So like, what does a mature long jump? What is happening at the trunk? So this gives us the opportunity to just analyze fairly quickly a few skills. Uh, stages of motor development. This is a cool source that I found from a coaching website that I've been using. Uh, and again, Australia has some incredible resources in this in terms of movement milestones. So if you're working with really young kids, this is from the integrated therapy services but what it does is you have to kind of work your way through to get to the uh, resources they're just up top here uh, so called occupational therapy this is where we get it uh, our model click 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 cut 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 get out of this learn milestones
So this last one here is uh, something called the You Thrive Australia Developmental Milestone. So it takes a little while to get into this website. So I want to walk you through it because in here it's, it's, it's a neat resource. But what I find is that if you go into the learning and go to milestones. So what we're actually looking for here is what are the developmental milestones? And if you take a look at the top, I get babies, toddlers, and school age. So let's just say we're teaching uh, eight-year-olds in elementary. So when you click on these milestones, it's going to give us gross motor and fine motor milestones. And this is all like age-specific, but that doesn't mean that this is what we're going to hold our students to all the time. But it gives us an idea, right? And remember that every phys ed class is like a reading class. You're going to have a huge range of kids. So even though in the curriculum it's going to say something like uh, teach throwing, right? But you may have kids in grade one or even kindergarten who have an amazing throw. So sometimes these milestones are like our reading benchmarks. It just gives us an opportunity to take a look at where we're heading. Now, the next thing that I'm going to jump into here is uh, some PDF docs that I've been working with and have put quite a bit of time into trying to give some structure to the curriculum that was released. So when we're talking about specific pieces, we have a, a language. So I have these in a, a couple of different formats. And uh, these will also, all of these will be linked below this video. And I'm giving them to you in PDF form uh, to start. But I also have this in a Google spreadsheet. And I'm setting it up so you'll be able to copy my entire spreadsheet and change it and modify it as you would like. So what I've been doing is that it started with uh, a huge scope and sequence. So I broke down the entire curriculum into its components, those guiding questions. And then what I've been working on recently is stuff like this. So let's go to the grade one summary. So I print these out on 11 by 17 paper. And they do, they come out really well. This one's just kind of fuzzy on me right now. But what it does is it's going to give you the opportunity to take a look at all of your active living cusps, uh, all of them, the each one, and each component. So, for example, the red is our character, uh, the orange is the safety, the H is healthy eating. So even though I'm going to be focusing in on the phys ed and some of the character and the safety components, you'll be able to see the snapshot on one page. When we continue to work through these, I've also broken it down into like the active living summary. So our active living summary is going to give us every grade all of the active living components in the cusp format. So again, if you're a specialist and you're trying to look at how to build a scope and sequence, this is going to give you the opportunity to take a look fairly, fairly quickly without having to look through all those pages in a way to help you plan. Okay, so these are being built out um, because of moving pieces around. I've also put these on a resource website that I have. So all of these summaries are also on my website if you're having trouble downloading them from this site. Right, so you see I have the active living, the movement skills summary, and the healthy eating summary. Uh, in here you're also going to notice that I do have elements that are highlighted in blue. That's because these are some of the elements that I'm going to be focusing on in our sessions. Okay, there are key learnings that we can use with students. So this, this is a quick overview of the entire curriculum. Okay, this is grade uh, kindergarten to grade six. And the reason I just wanted to show you that is because when we get into how do we evaluate, how do we track student progress, I'm going to be referring to those numbers. So instead of just having a bunch of general outcomes, they're labeled. Every cusp is like a 1.1 or when we get into safety, that's the fours. So like the second safety cusp would be 4-2. And what I'm really excited about is when I can finally get to doing some of the evaluation and I can show you how to track progress in all of these cusps throughout the year in a way that's not static. So if a student progresses in throwing over the course of a couple of months, then guess what? You can make that same thing on the same piece of paper as we move forward.
Uh, the website those are on are, is palmarlet.com, but again, they will be linked underneath uh, this video as part of your toolkit. Uh, when you go to my website, the big thing is you do have to be logged into a Gmail account to access it. That's a small little security thing I've put in. Uh, last thing is this. This is uh, a quick kind of curriculum overview of the vocabulary of the main pieces. So active living, what is physical literacy? Um, and what are, what are those eight big pieces that we're working on? So that's me. Uh, those are my email addresses. And our next set of videos that will be coming up are all about year planning and the differences between a traditional framework of physical education, which is generally based around a unit or a sport or a game, and then looking at how that's different than the teaching games for understanding model, which I feel this new curriculum is very well uh, kind of set up for. And before I leave, I'm going to zoom up big here. Uh, we got these at our school. These are some resources that were developed by some of the greats in our province. Uh, I've worked with uh, several of them, and the work they do is outstanding. So this is the one for health and wellness. Uh, these books are crazy because they've gone through, oops, sorry, they've gone through the new curriculum and they've created lesson templates that break down what it is you're going through and how to integrate it. And these are robust books. This is the one, uh, the other one, this is Gleddy uh, Hickson and Bradford. Uh, this is the one that is the, sorry, my light's getting a reflection, Foundations of Physical Legi of Literacy, The Journey for Elementary. And, and again, this has a lot of information in it. It even breaks it down how it's different from provinces. Uh, just things to do to really up your game as a phys ed teacher. And it gives you just all kinds of stuff in here like how to build in all of the soft skills, the character, some of the safety, um, and how to build activity days. Like these, these resources, uh, if you have them at your school, they're not just sitting around. Pick them up and take a look through them because they will make a big difference. All right. So I look forward to seeing you live soon. Uh, we start in November, and I'll see you, if not, on the next set of videos. Thank you much, very much, and have a fabulous time in the gym.